Welcome back, everyone, to Lone Wolf, Book 4, The Chasm of Doom. Boom! When last we left off, bad times for the bad guys. Oh, yeah. And uh, we are going south to the Machen Gorge and the ruins of Machen. The Temple Machen and the ruins of Machen atop the Machen Gorge. <sighs> Hopefully we won't run into Dokken and Shokken from the War Slammers. Anyway, we have a Stop the Sacrifice. Fifty miles south of Ruinon, a ruined city of Machen tears on the brink of the Machen Gorge. <laughs> Sorry. A cold sweat breaks out on upon your brow as you contemplate the difficulty of your mission, for you are separated from your goal by fifty miles of enemy-held territory. But there's still a flicker of hope. With the enemy in confusion and retreat, your chances of success will be far higher now than before the battle. <clears throat> before you set off on your perilous mission, Captain Duvall offers you choice of equipment and the following provisions. Uh, huh? Uh -huh. Pretty good, honestly. Uh, rope. This rope doesn't seem to take up two spots. Rope is usually good. I don't think I need this key anymore. Don't think I needed it in the first place, honestly. Uh, let's get rid of that. Let's take a Lombs per Potion 4. And the rope. And we'll take the spear. Spears are handy. We don't need the creepy scroll anymore. <coughs> Okie dokie. Moving along. What? Oh, clicked the wrong button. There we go. Dusk soon enshrouds the beleaguered outpost of Ruinon, and you use the cover of darkness to cross the body-strewn plain towards the south. An old highway trails off to Machen, but it is cloaked with Vasagonian warriors. They stand about in sullen groups, tending their wounded and brooding on their defeat. However, even demoralized and dejected, they are still a deadly foe. It will be too dangerous to risk passing through their ranks, so you must use the forest to conceal your passage. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't seem to matter. Let's go to the left. The forests are patrolled by bandits, but they take little interest in their guard duties, and you find it easy to avoid them in the dark. Then, by chance, you come across a small log cabin hidden deep in the woods. A candle flickers at the window, and the door is ajar. Oh, we found it. Let's go look at it. Oh no! The door slams shut, and you spin around to see a bandit leaping at you from the shadows. His head is a mass of bloodied bandages, but his arm he is armed and determined to fight. He makes bad decisions. Oh well. And he's dead. You roll the, do roll the dead bandit over with the toe of your boot and make a quick search of his body. You discover the following items. Do we have a dagger? Yes. You may take any of the above items. As you are leaving, you may notice a trapdoor in the floor. You see it leads down into the cellar of the building. This could be an amazingly bad idea if someone has hurt us. But it could be a secret passage, too. Nope! We're dead! You're at the bottom of the cellar ladder when the trapdoor slams shut and you hear a bolt slide across the lock. You hammer on the trapdoor, desperately trying to escape, but your captors cover the trapdoor with a heavy oak cask and keep guard in the room above. Four days pass before the slock slides back, but the hands that open the trapdoor are bony and fleshless. Your life and your mission end here. Well, son of a bitch. That's unfortunate. It's only four minutes. Let's go back to the starting point. Let's see. Okay, so we did that. We made our... Action chart adjustments. Picking back up where we left the thing, let's go to the right this time. Okay. Your passage through the trees is lit by a flickering glow of the campfires that line the highway. Bandit warriors huddle around, drawing warmth and comfort from the flames. Oh, yeah. Uh, killed by undead in the base. And like a retard. I knew that was a bad idea. <clears throat> Your passage through the trees is lit by the flickering glow of the campfires that line the highway. Bandit warriors huddled round, drawing warmth and comfort from the flames. 
They take little interest in their guard duties, and you find it easy to avoid their patrols. By morning, you have reached the edge of the forest. You stare out across the fields of crops towards a small village that lies at the base of the shallow valley. The fields are only separated by narrow tracks, and these are alive with flying insects, hovering in swarms. You are walking along one of these tracks when suddenly you spot bandits ahead. They are wandering idly up the track towards you, their spears slung over their shoulders. I knew there was a reason I always took camouflage by book four. Oh well. You lie with your face pressed close to the crop roots, your breath held and your nerves stretched as taut as bowstrings, waiting for the patrol to pass. Hundreds of minute creatures busily file up and down the yellowed stalks. Your whole body begins to prickle as you imagine they're swarming up your legs, up your sleeves, and down the neck of your tunic. When a trickle of sweat runs down your cheek, you nearly cry out and reveal your hiding place. The bandits amble past, barely inches from where you hide, totally oblivious to your presence. When you're sure they no longer are on the track, you jump up and frantically scratch your itching skin. To your horror, you discover that your legs are covered with crawling insects feasting on your blood. Ripping your clothes off, you empty them from your boots and scrape them from your skin before hurrying off along the track. The blood-sucking insects have robbed you of two endurance points. Little bastards. You bypass a village with orange wood cabins and stone walls and climb through the tall fields towards the wooded ridge. Beyond the ridge, you enter a thick forest and discover a bubbling freshwater stream. You dink deep, drink, you dink deeply. You drink deeply and realize how hungry you are. You must eat a meal here or lose three endurance points. Not in the mine anymore, so I can hunt. As night falls, you reach the city of Makin. The gaunt, gaunt weed-infested ruins of this shattered city are spread like a vast graveyard and bathed in the eerie light of a nearly full moon. A sound fills the air like the wailing of lost souls. It is the cry of the mocking gorge. It has been nearly two days since you last slept, and fatigue begins to overwhelm you. Drawing your kai cloak about your shoulders, you settle down to sleep. You'll need all your strength for the daunting task ahead. <clears throat> Okay, I think we can successfully heal up. Dawn arrives, rain-swept and gloom-laden. A pall of drizzle hangs over the ghost city, and the gruesome discord of the wailing winds of Mockingorge make you feel uneasy. You watch and wait, your kai cloak drawn close about your shoulders to keep out the chill, damp air. It was here, during the age of the Black Moon, that King Olnar of Summerland killed the mightiest of the Dark Lords, Lord Vashna, in mortal combat upon the very brink of the abyss. The Dark Lord was slain by the Summer Sword. It is said that his death cry when he fell will echo through the gorge until the day he rises to wreak his vengeance on Summerland and the House of Olnar. Your stomach contracts at the thought that this could be that very day. For five hours you observe and take in every detail of the ruined city. The first line of the strange verse keeps repeating itself in your mind. When the full moon shines o'er the temple deep, the temple must be underground, and there must be an entrance. But where? You study every crack in the broken ground and eliminate all but two possibilities. A crypt door guarded by two Vasagonian warriors, and a flight of marble steps descending into the earth between two columns of fractured pillars. Well, it's obviously the guarded crypt door. We just have to deal with those two idiots first. Let's go for it. You manage to reach a tangle of briars growing near the crypt door, and from here you can observe the Vasagonian guards undetected. More soldiers appear on horseback, riding into Machin from the north. They dismount and approach the door. Password! shouts the crypt guards. Loan! reply the soldiers. The door opens, and they're allowed to enter. Armed with the password, you decide to try and enter in the same way. Keeping the hood of your cloak raised and your summer lending features in shadow, you walk boldly towards the guard. Camouflage! Still don't have it. Uh, but we might make it anyway. Your bravado has paid off. The guards accept the password and allow you to enter the crypt. As the stone door is drawn shut, you find yourself in a wide, torch-lit corridor heading towards the east. The corridor ends in a flight of steps that descend a hundred feet into the earth. At the bottom of a short passage leads to a junction where a tunnel runs from north to south. 
To the north, you can see the torchlit cavern and what appears to be observation slits carved into the wall. To the south, a passage leads to the low balcony. Well, the chasm's to the south, so let's go with that. That's ominous. An empty feeling grips your stomach as you stare upon the altar and inner sanctum of the subterranean temple. Your Kai senses burn as if every nerve in your body is screaming a warning to flee from this evil chamber. Huge braziers of molten metal encircle a black altar upon which lies the fair Madelon, the daughter of Baron Vanalon. She seems to be entranced. Her breathing is slow and shallow. Beyond the altar lie two massive doors, a gigantic skull engraved upon their black stone surface. Out of your view, another door opens, and a procession of red-cloaked priests enters the temple. Their heads are covered, and they each carry strange amulets of black stone. They file past the altar, depositing the amulets in a circle around the young girl's body, and then file out again in total silence. Then you hear the sound of distant, a distant drumbeat. It grows louder and nearer. The measured steps of steel-shod boots resound in its wake. Baraka is approaching. Oh, those are just the priesty guys. <laughs> Baraka carries the stench of death and decay about him. He strides into the temple, his beat, boots of Gorgas hide, covering both legs and feet, and slams shut the huge stone door with frightening ease. He stands in silence before pushing open the huge black doors engraved with menacing skulls. Suddenly, a gale-force wind sweeps through the temple and your ears are filled by a terrible scream. Beyond the open doors, a pier of stone juts into the ab abyss of the Mackengorge. You are staring into the chasm of doom. Baraka turns away from the windswept pier and walks slowly towards the altar. From a hidden scabbard, he removes a twisted black dagger and holds its stiletto blade to the light. An evil blue flame runs up and down the black steel spike, flickering in the ice-cold winds of Mackengorge. The sacrifice is about to begin. Mm, let's go kick his ass. I have the summer sword. As you raise your golden sword, the howling wind seems to rise in pitch and intensity. It claws at your mind, filling your head with terrible images of death and horror. Baraka sees you falter and strikes a cruel blow that opens a wound in your cheek. You lose one endurance point, but the sudden pain reawakens you to the presence of your enemy, and combat begins. Okie dokie, 25. No, not 58. 25. 29 hit points is a pretty close fight, actually. The Summer Sword gives me a nice edge, though. You're being attacked by a very powerful Mind Blast, and yes, unless you possess Discipline of Mind Shield, you're reduced for four. However, Barak himself is a warrior who possesses formidable strength of will and is immune to Mind Blast. We haven't had anyone be immune for a long time. We've still got our shield on our helmet, though. So 27 to 25 and nearly the same hit points. This could go either way. Let's do it. Uh, he took four, we took five. Bad start. He took four, we took five. Could I not roll a one? Anything but a one. A three. That's... Could be, could be bad. Oh, God. Oh, my God. That was really, really close. <laughs> oh, Lordy. And we won! Thank God. As Baraka dies, the wind suddenly rises in pitch and intensity, filling the temple with a mournful cry of despair. You feel the chill, malevolent spirit of Dark Lord Fashion engulfing you in his icy embrace, but you sense he is powerless to part. The sacrifice has been foiled, and he is doomed to lament for a victory that might have been. Lying on the black floor is the Dagger of Vashna. As you pick it up and tuck it into your belt, special item, uh, the evil blue flame flickers and dies. As long as you possess this evil blade, Dark Lord Vashna and his legion of dead warriors will remain imprisoned in the chasm of doom forever. 
You free fair Madelon from the altar and carry her through the corridors of the temple that lead up to the surface. As you emerge into the moonlit ruins, an astounding sight greets your eyes. Baraka's warriors are running from the ghost city in all directions, closely pursued by an army of cavalrymen. The light of the full moon and the glittering torches that these horsemen carry illuminates the sun crest that bedecks their tunics. Word must have reached Holmgard, for they are the summer lending army, led by King Olnar himself. Your countrymen praise your courage and daring, their strident cheers drowning the cry of the Mackengorge, for once again you have proved yourself a true hero of Summerland. As you deliver Madelon into the waiting arms of her father, his overwhelming joy fills you with a sense of great achievement. You are indeed worthy of the title, Kai Lord. You have succeeded in your perilous quest, but the epic saga of Lone Wolf, last of the Kai Lords, is far from complete. A new and deadly challenge awaits you in Book 5 of the Lone Wolf series, The Shadow on the Sand. Baraka's men flee from Lord Olnar. Yeah, looks like he's fleeing to me. Shadow on the Sand, we get to heal ourselves back up to full. Lovely. We don't have an enemy. Let's see. We're going to take tracking for our new ability. Got a dagger, a spear, some money, some food. Going to get rid of this brass key. And this other crap that seems to just be there to take up space. Um, we can fight with the dagger of Ashna, which is nifty if we lose our other one. <laughs> we died one time. Let's see, we died twice there, twice there. So we've died in every book except the first one, sadly. Save our game. Let's see. Voyage to Vasagonia promises to end the Shadow of War, so it looks like we're on a diplomatic mission uh, to a city full of treachery and death. And nothing bad happened. Anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed Lone Wolf, Book 4, The Chasm of Doom. Remember to check out Project Aeon. Uh... Check out some of the other books they do that aren't just Lone Wolf. They've got some Grey Star. They've got some other great stuff. Um, I'm going to try and get Carnage to do some of these at some point, but I don't think he has the attention span for them. But thankfully, Grimoth and his wonderful dulcet tones is, is going to start and hopefully finish some Lone Wolf books, and he'll be fun to watch. I know I've been enjoying watching him. Uh, well, his first round didn't go quite so well, but it never does. So, like I said, head over to his page, give him some support, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next set of whatever I decide to record, whenever I decide to record it. Until then!